Welcome back to Code Station 33. Last time we were here, we were talking about arrays and how to use arrays and set them up. But those were arrays of numbers and sometimes of characters, which leads us to a conversation about a very special type of array called arrays of strings. Strings are very, very useful in code often because we want to send messages to people and we want to be able to record those messages. And the way we do that is with letters stored together in an array. So let's dive in and take a look at some code and some of the things that we can do with arrays of characters, which we are calling strings. So I've written some code here for us to go through and take a look. Um, the first thing we have to do is make sure that we set up our character string so it has enough size to hold all of the letters plus one character to hold what's called a terminal null reference which lets the code know where the string actually ends. So for example, I'm going to say character, my string, I can call it anything I want. I'm setting it up as a size 6. And then I'm going to put in the each of the individual characters, H-E-L-L-O, in the index 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. And then the fifth index, I'm going to put in a 0, which is my null terminator for my array. Now, that can be a real pain in the neck in order to set up strings like that all the time. Uh, there's a lot of lines of code if you're going to write something more than the word hello. So what we want to do is be able to come up with a faster way of doing it. And we know that we can declare arrays in um, our Arduino language without necessarily saying how big the array is and just assign it to the actual values. But when we're talking about a array of characters or a string, we do that with just quotation marks rather than doing the brackets and, and uh, commas. So if I want to say my string 2 is equal to hello, that's all I have to do. And it will basically do everything that we did above in my string, only it does it all for you. It puts in the indexes for us and also adds in the terminating, the terminating null character. So it already knows that it is set up the size to be 6 for us automatically. So once we have created our string, there are some things that we can do in order to manipulate our string. These string manipulations give Arduino a lot of power in terms of changing what our communications with people are and searching information and exploring what the people have said to us and using that information in lots of different ways. So let's take a look at some of those. Um, I start with a string that says, I like coffee and cake. And I'm going to print it out. And it's going to say, I like coffee and cake on the screen. Then I'm going to delete part of it by moving the null, the terminating character, to a new spot. So I'm going to move it to spot index number 13. So if I look at that, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, then I miscount. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. So and cake is going to be gone because I'm putting the null, the terminating character, at index 13. It doesn't change the size of the array. It does, however, um, change where C stops looking for a string. Then I'm going to put back in another word. So again, instead of character 13 being a 0 now, my terminating space, I'm going to set it equal to a space again. And then add in characters T, E, and A, and insert the new word, and then putting in my terminating string at 0. Now, the interesting thing about that is that the word AND had been sitting there all along. I never had to put the word and back in. So when I run this,
and I go down to look at my serial monitor, right? I like coffee and cake. I like coffee. That's where we cut off the and cake. I like coffee and tea. So really, it added, the and had not gone anywhere. All we did was said, stop looking past the E. And then we said, okay, yeah, you can look past the E now, but instead of having cake, we're going to have T and then put the terminal character in. So that gives you an idea of some of the things that we can do with those string manipulations by placing that terminal character in different spots. Let's take a look at creating another string. This is my string. Again, setting up a character array. I'm setting up an output string that is 40 characters long. And the reason why I'm making it 40 characters long is because I want to be able to, let me stop this. There we go. I want to be able to work within the array. As we saw in the previous example, the size of the array can't change. So no matter how we work with this, that size of the array is going to stay the same. The first thing we want to look at is something called string length. That will tell us how many characters are stored in that string. Notice this is different than when we're talking about our array length. Um, the array length could really be you know, lots of different sizes, and we looked at that using size of when we did this before, and we had to do some division. It was kind of complicated. So when we're talking about strings, we definitely want to talk about string length because it'll tell us how many characters are in the string, and it excludes the null terminator and anything else that might be in the array. Size of really just tells us the size of the array and includes any terminating character and we might have to do some math like we had to do with the integers in order to get the actual ending index so it it's something that we kind of have to be careful of and use uh, carefully it's easier to use string length we have this really cool function here called string copy which will copy um, the uh, string into a new string and again we have to make sure we leave space for the output String concat allows us to add things to our string. So concat means, that's the C-A-T. It means to add or append to the end of the string. So we're going to take what we had before and add the word sketch. Then we can get the length again and print that out. And we could also take a look at size of again and take a look at that. So let's look at those things down here. So this was our coffee and cake example, we have our length of our array was 17. Uh, the size of the array is 18. That includes the terminal character. This is my string. This is my string sketch. This is the length, which is 25. So this is how we add, appended that word sketch to it. The size of the array str out string is 40. And then we print it, and then we're going to do, do a couple more things. So those are all the different things that we can do with this array of characters that we're calling strings. However, it's kind of clunky. It doesn't work as well as we would like. And sometimes um, having set aside a little bit more memory in order to get ease of use is valuable. Now we know memory in the Arduino is really, really uh, precious because we have a very small space to write stuff but we might want to make our lives a little bit easier and use something called a string object, which definitely requires more memory than these uh, arrays of characters. So the string object really is done differently. We have to tell Arduino that we want a string object using the string type declaration. We've used other type declarations. This is the way we would do it with strings. And we're just going to declare it. My string 3 is equal to this is my string. Then we have some cool built-in functions that we did not have before, like to uppercase. It'll take everything and make it an uppercase. We can override it and reassign a new value totally into the string very easily without dealing with any of those individual characters or dealing with the terminal operator. We can replace 
the word string with the word Arduino sketch and it will actually go through and find the word string and then replace it with the Arduino sketch. I don't have to tell C where that is. It does all that work for me. And then getting the length of the string is significantly easier because I just have to call a method called length and C will, Arduino will automatically give me the length of that. So when I run that, we can see uh, this is my new string being capitalized, my new string replacing string with sketch, Arduino sketch, and then it says the length is 22 for us. So it's a lot easier to use the string object than it is to use the character array of string, of letters that we're calling a string. But memory, there's a trade-off. Our string object takes a lot of memory in our Arduino, whereas our string array of characters does not take as much memory. Now, if you want to do some more things with your strings, there is a great website, and I'll link it for you, and it gives us a list of all the different possible string operators we can use. It's called the string class in Arduino. Let's take a look. And it defines what a string is for us and gives us some examples and then tells us all the different functions we can use like character at which tells us a particular character at an index allows us to compare strings what it ends with equals um, index of last index of that's useful if you're trying to find a particular character length we saw remove replace you can see how many different function there are of course there's a two lowercase to match the two uppercase trim down here takes out extra spaces uh, there, there's all kinds of different operators and then of course there's some examples that we could follow so I, I've included all this for you in our lesson and you can go ahead and take a look at some of these examples and some of these things here's the string examples you might want to use this in the assignment character analysis um, string addition operator string case changes string characters comparisons string start with and string ends with check the character substrings given a, a start and ends with um, look for phrase within a given string uh, then converting a string to a number which is sometimes useful like if you have an address that has a number in it and you might want to do some work on that number so that's all we have for strings today i'll see you next time